What exactly happened to Bon Scott the night of his death? I'm going to be taking a look at that in this video, and in particular, at the end of this video, I'm going to read to you a very detailed statement from Alistair Kinnear. Alistair Kinnear is the last person who saw Bon Scott alive. The official story of Bon Scott's death is that after a night of drinking with Alistair Kinnear, Bon Scott passed out in Alistair's car. Despite Alistair's attempts to wake him up, the ACDC singer was passed out cold, and so instead, Alistair parked his car by his apartment, covered Bon Scott with a blanket, and left him to sleep for the night. In the morning when Alistair woke up and went to check in on Bon, he found that Bon was still asleep in the car. But he soon realized that Bon wasn't actually asleep, he was dead. And officially, the cause of his death was listed as acute alcohol poisoning, death by misadventure. Bon Scott was the lead singer in ACDC from late 1974 until early 1980, and over the course of his time with the band, he recorded six studio albums. You could make the argument that he recorded seven studio albums with the band because the Australian version of High Voltage and the international version of High Voltage are almost two completely different albums, but that's a separate topic altogether. In addition to his stage presence and his vocal abilities, Bon Scott was also known for his outlandish behavior. He lived the rock and roll lifestyle to the fullest, and ultimately that's what led to his untimely death. Even before Bon Scott was a rock and roll singer, he had a very outlandish personality and was getting into trouble from an early age. As a matter of fact, as a teenager, he spent time in a prison assessment center and later in a juvenile institution. At one point, he tried to join the Australian army, but was turned down by the army and labeled socially maladjusted. Long story short, Bon Scott has always been a hellraiser. The last time Bon Scott was ever in the studio was just a few days before his death. In February of 1980, preparations were underway by ACDC for their next record, the record that would end up becoming Back in Black. Now, there are many rumors and debates out there regarding the degree of Bon Scott's contribution to the record. What we know for sure is that Bon Scott was present for a session on February 15, 1980, where the young brothers Angus and Malcolm were working on the beginnings of two songs that would appear on Back in Black. These songs being Let Me Put My Love Into You and Have a Drink On Me. And interestingly, for this session, Bon Scott played the drums rather than contributing vocals. At this point in time, Bon Scott was in England. On the night of February 18th, he went out for a night in the town, and in typical Bon Scott fashion, he had a night of heavy drinking. The drinking predominantly took place at a London club which at the time was called The Music Machine. Today it's known as Coco. Bon Scott was accompanied that night by his friend Alistair Kinnear. As mentioned, the official story of Bon Scott's death is that after this night of heavy drinking, Bon Scott passed out in Alistair's car, and the day after Alistair Kinnear discovered Bon Scott had died. Officially, the cause of death was listed as acute alcohol poisoning, death by misadventure. Though there are those who were close to Bon that believe his death was not a result of alcohol, but rather a result of heroin. More specifically, this theory suggests that Bon Scott's alleged heroin use that night caused him to vomit and that he choked on his vomit in his sleep. In 2017, author Jesse Fink published a book about Bon Scott titled Bon, The Last Highway. For this book, Jesse Fink extensively researched the circumstances surrounding Bon Scott's death and spoke with many of the people who were close to him at the time. According to some of those people Jesse Fink spoke with, Bon Scott had begun to use heroin around this time in his life. In an interview about his book, Jesse said the following, quote, Former heroin users know what other heroin users look like, and they made it very clear to me that they had thought Bon had taken heroin that night. End quote. As of yet, no definitive proof has surfaced that heroin was involved with his death that night. Jesse Fink, however, does question the official ruling regarding Bon Scott's passing, even pointing to the fact that Bon Scott's death certificate had inaccuracies on it. Quote, There's an incorrect address on the death certificate. Why has no one ever picked that up? I was looking at it like, have I got this wrong? No, I'm really looking at a mistake on a death certificate. End quote. Fink goes on to discuss how he believes the official ruling of the cause of Bon Scott's death was rushed and possibly inaccurate. Combine that with the claims from those who knew Bon Scott that said he likely did heroin that night, it does make for a compelling argument that there's more to this story. I want to conclude with a statement from Alistair Kinnear that was released in 2005 for the 25th anniversary of Bon Scott's death. In this statement, he goes into detail about his recollections of that fateful night. Quote, In late 1978, I met Silver Smith, with whom I moved to a flat in Kensington. She was a sometime girlfriend of Bon Scott. On the night of the 18th of February 1980, Zena Kakuli, a band manager, invited me to the inaugural gig of her sister's band at the Music Machine. I phoned Silver to see if she wanted to come along, but she made other arrangements for that evening. However, she suggested that Bon might be interested, as he had phoned her earlier looking for something to do. I gave him a call, and he was agreeable, and I picked him up at his flat on Ashley Court in Westminster. It was a great party, and Bon and I both drank far too much. 
both at the free bar backstage and at the upstairs bar as well. However, I did not see him take any drugs that evening. At the end of the party, I offered to drive him home. As we approached his flat, I realized that Bond had drifted into unconsciousness. I left him in my car and rang his doorbell, but his current living girlfriend didn't answer. I took Bond's keys and let myself into the flat, but no one was at home. I was unable to wake Bond, so I rang Silver for advice. She said that he passed out quite frequently and that it was best to just leave him to sleep it off. I then drove to my flat on Overhill Road and tried to lift him out of the car, but he was too heavy for me to carry in my intoxicated state, so I put the front passenger seat back so that he could lie flat, covered him with a blanket, left a note with my address and phone number on it, and staggered upstairs to bed. It must have been 4 or 5 a.m. by that time, and I slept until about 11. When I was awakened by a friend, Leslie Lodes, I was so hungover that I asked Leslie to do me a favor of checking on Bon. He did so and returned to tell me my car was empty, so I went back to sleep, assuming that Bon had awoken and taken a taxi home. At around 7.30 that evening, I went down to my car intending to pay a visit to my girlfriend who was in hospital and was shocked to find Bon still lying flat in the front seat, obviously in a very bad way and not breathing. I immediately drove him to King's College Hospital where Bon was pronounced dead on arrival. The Lambeth coroner's report cited acute alcohol poisoning and death by misadventure. It has since been speculated that Bond choked on his own vomit, but I can neither confirm nor deny this, and his death certificate says nothing about it. There was no vomit in the car, and contrary to other reports I've read, he was not wrapped around the gear stick when I found him. I made a statement to the police at the hospital, and later spoke to the Evening Standard, relating everything I knew at the time. The next day, Silver came around to see me. She told me for the first time that Bond had been receiving treatment for liver damage, but had missed several doctor's appointments. I wish I had known this at the time. I truly regret Bond's death. Hindsight being 2020, I would have driven him to the hospital when he first passed out. But in those days of excess, unconsciousness was commonplace and seemed no cause for real alarm. It has been implied that I mysteriously disappeared, but in fact, I have been living on the Costa del Sol a region of Spain, for 22 years, still working as a musician, and am in touch with most of my old friends in England and in other parts of the world. So I am not hiding from anyone. What I'd like to pass on from this unfortunate experience is the idea that we should all take better care of our friends and err on the side of caution when we don't know all the facts. End quote. Bon Scott was born on July 9, 1946, in Forfar, Angus, Scotland. Officially, his death is listed as February 19, 1980, in East Dulwich, London, England. He was about 33 and a half at the time of his passing. He is buried at Fremantle Cemetery in Perth, Australia. Gone too soon, but his memory will always live on through his music.